Hello, can you hear me okay out there? Hi, how are we doing? Can you hear me? Let me know. Good, thank you. Tempe, Arizona, Susanville, California. Johns Creek, Georgia. I'm going to have to look some of these up on the map. Maps. Johns Creek. Georgia. Yeah. Mm. It's outside of Atlanta. That's great. McAllen, oh yeah, BYU, Idaho. Hello, welcome from BYU, Idaho. Is it? Is it still cold up there at BYU, Idaho? I imagine. I think you guys were getting some snow here just not too long ago, I think. All right, let me get over there, scroll down a little bit. Dallas, Georgia, yeah, yeah, not far from uh, Atlanta, yeah. Colorado Springs, Colorado, a nice place. Okay, I thought I'd start off um, with some answers from some questions that were in the past that I couldn't answer. Thanks, Mike, from Las Vegas. Thanks for showing up. So going to my uh, document here where I wrote down the answers on some of these questions was someone asked me a while ago, why are we not showing hours on source attaches? We used to have a piece of software that we included in the browser that showed you, you know, it was an hour ago or yesterday or something like that. And it was kind of fun to have that in there, but it just got to where that didn't scale very well and it didn't work great in all the different time zones. So we just quit using that and we just put the date, the the time, the date and, and uh, when it was changed. Um, will Ancestry ever include newspapers.com in a free subscription? You'd have to ask Ancestry because it's owned by Ancestry. My guess is probably not. Um, you can do a 30-day uh, free evaluation from newspapers.com, but I would guess that that's probably not ever going to be free. Uh, it, uh, then the next one was, is it possible to customize the feed that displays on the home page to only show my direct line ancestors? We don't do that now. We do allow you to take an ancestor. If you see something on your feed on your home page, you don't care for the picture or you don't care for that particular PID, you can go into the um, click by the, you know, down in the bottom of the picture. I'm just going to go over there real quick just to see what it looks like. You can go to the picture on the home page that you're not interested in. Or the the home the you can go to the one that has uh, somebody you're not interested in, and there's three little dots over in the bottom right hand corner of each picture. You can click that, and you can say hide this memory because I don't want to see this particular memory from that person. Or you can say actually remove that person from this page, and what it'll do is it, it won't ever show you either that particular memory or anything from that person. But we don't uh, we haven't taken the effort to go and just do direct line. The intent was to try to show you that things are happening on uh, on your line in the global tree. Okay, so 25 below zero in Maine tonight. Woo, that is cold. We had it pretty chilly here, but I don't think we got the zero. We, But it's been a little while since we've had really cold, cold. So... Okay, the next question was uh, blank family group sheets. Somebody wanted to have some blank family group sheets that they can uh, print out, and I think I found some. So I'm going to post it out here. And there you go, and hopefully that shows up in the feed okay, where it says uh, uh, where you can go to go link to get those family group sheets, forms, and you can just print them out, then you'll have them. Uh, let's see. 
Yeah, this one here. Uh, oh, someone asked, why am I shown that the ordinances are not available? So uh, depends on when you ask this question. I don't. Let me see if I can see when that happened. That wasn't very far long ago. Hmm, I don't know. I'm not gonna go dig around looking for it. Anyway, if you uh, if you see not available, uh, there's about two or three reasons. One is it's either a Jewish Holocaust victim, which we don't show those ordinances because. Um, we have a agreement with the Jewish community about that. And so we don't show the ordinances and we don't allow people to do those ordinances unless they're a direct line uh, descendant. Uh, it could be um, someone changed the sex of the person and there were ordinances for the other sex. So they were male and then it had ordinances and then you change the female, then it would that would show up as well. And also they'd show up on uh, people that are in um, I guess that's pretty much most common ones. Now, we recently, as you know, in December, we put in support for same-sex relationships. You can document them in Family Tree now. And uh, as part of that work, we're in the process of changing things so that if you change the sex of somebody, it doesn't uh, block ordinances or hide ordinances. It will just simply... Uh, if it's a male, they'll show you male ordinances, and if you flip it to a female, it will show female ordinances if there are, are ordinances on that person, or it will show uh, that they're available and ready to be used. And uh, that way, we're not we're not spending energy causing the uh, ordinances to be um, invalidated. And then if somebody says, "Oh, well, that was changed incorrectly," and they change it back, then now you have to go do those ordinances again. So, uh, and let's see. The next one is for one for today. This will be the first question. And I'm not going to answer it because I, I have to do a little more research. I didn't take a look at it a little earlier. I've been kind of running crazy for Roots Tech. But uh, this person said that they had a pink banner across some of the audio files where it says processing failed. <clears throat> she says the ban or he Rex, I guess it was said the banner was wrong. Processing did not fail because the banner suddenly appear on three of my four mom's audios about three months ago after sitting there for several years. So he's the he reference to support case. So I will go follow up on that and look at the support case and go talk to the, the team and see what's going on there. So I'll take that into my, uh, into my stuff to go check on. Uh, Dana said, um, uh, okay, well, Dana is talking about uh, they received a hint for 1901 Canada census. When I tried to add the hint, the page come up showing record removed. So <clears throat> just so you know how the hints start, is, and this will happen occasionally, because the records, we don't just, anytime records come into the system, we don't just automatically load it into the hint system. What we have to do is we have to, once a quarter or so, we will take all of the hints, including all of the new hints that are done, and we load it into this hint, hint system that's separate from the one we use for you because we're preparing it. And that hint system will, will chug on those uh, records and chug on all the persons in the tree, and it takes them about uh, two to three weeks of big CPU, big CPU, big servers crunching away on those two to find all the matches between those two things. And then we release it to um, the community, and that's how you start getting hints. When you add new persons, we compare it against what's in that system, but that system isn't upgraded with new hints nor is it uh, deprecated with hints that have been taken out. So for a small period of time, three to I mean, four to 12 weeks, you may see some cases where hints have disappeared, even though we're offering you a hint. So that's why in about, you know, at most 12 weeks or so, 12 to, I don't know, three to four months, then that'll go away and won't be included in the set anymore. Um. Yeah, Jesse's telling us that telling us that she loves the new merge process. We are working on a new merge. 
the uh, goal and intent of that new merge is to help people do a better job and know when to back off for uh, for merging and hopefully that it will be better we're trying to improve things so that people don't mess up the tree and we believe uh, one of the areas that that can happen obviously is in the merge world um, so Maureen asks if somebody has uh, printed cards and passed away what do, do do we do with the cards you can you can use them or you can destroy them uh, right now the ordinances on the reservations on a person's list stay on their list unless a family member calls and we'll release them um, you can return them to the temple you can shred them you can do whatever you like because uh, eventually whatever's on that list will uh, expire and they will be brought into free reign for others to take so you can just destroy them if you don't want them um, I don't think returning them to the temple does anything because necessarily because they'll they'll want to put them in a drawer and it'll just sit in the drawer and there may be one or two that gets done so I would just get rid of them or or do them yourself if you want to is there a limit to the number of albums in the gallery I'm not aware of any limit but I will go ask that question I don't know I don't think there is I haven't heard of anybody telling me there is a limit a limit to the number of of albums. I don't think there is, but I will go verify that. Type that in my little list. Okay. Um. All right, and uh, what else have I got here? We'll just go through these quickly, and then we'll move on to the questions submitted. How many contributions are there in Family Search Tree? Oh, contributors. Uh, a little over 30 million, so 30 point something million. I can't remember the exact number there. Contributors to uh, the tree and family search on family tree. Um, okay, so let me go and start looking at some of the questions we've had submitted. The first one is the Rex one where I'm going to look at the case number to see what it is. This one says, I, this is from Deborah. I had a patron at the Family History Center ask about a record that is only available on microfilm. How is the digitization coming, and do they have an estimate on when they will have all the microfilms done? I haven't gotten a recent estimate. A year or so ago, they were saying five years to get all of the digitization done. They are planning on doing microfilm. However, I will point out that the current plan has microfilm after all of the rolls of film were done. Uh, so I guess it's Michael Fish is what I'm thinking of. Michael Fish uh, will be um, digitized as well, but that'll be after all the rolls of microfilm. So I'm guessing it's probably somewhere between three years and four years, something like that. Uh, but, you know, they haven't let me know. I might ask. Uh, I did ask last time. I think somebody asked that about a month ago, and I went and asked, and they said we still don't have a new estimate yet. So I guess they're running under the same assumption that they're going to get done in that time frame. Um, okay, next question. <clears throat> I have regularly, uh, this is from Annette, I have regularly seen that our member helper numbers correspond with the last five digits of our MRN. However, there are a few cases that the number is totally different. Is it possible to change that member number to align with the MRN? Okay, so how the helper number, if you're a member of the church, the helper number is generated from the last five digits of your membership record number. You can go in and change that number anytime you want, and you can change it to be any number you want. And the reason for that is that's a security measure. So if you, if you give out your username and helper pin, and you have somebody who seems to keep helping or you're concerned that somebody may get in uh, and impersonate you with your account by doing helper, then you can just go into settings and I think it's on the contact page. You go look real quick here. You go to your name and then click setting underneath your name on the header, the top header, and then under contact. Oh no, take that back, uh, account. It's on account page at the bottom. It says helper number, you use five numbers or letters, whichever, whichever combination you want, 
And you can go in there and just type a new pin, helper pin, we call it. And then if that person had the old pin, well, they won't be able to do helping anymore. It's a security measure to help you uh, make sure that people aren't getting into your stuff if you're not interested in them doing that. So, yeah, you can change it to any number, including change it back to your last five of your membership number if you want. Oh, it makes you wonder why it got changed in the first place. So maybe it just been a mistake. Um, okay, so this one's coming from Carol. Carol says, almost every day I keep running into two different people on Family Search that have been merged incorrectly. Often the person who made the merge is some 11th or 12th cousin. This isn't the same person making the merges. There are rarely sources uh, for the merges, and there are sources they indicate something like got off ancestry. I am a non-Mormon. When I message these users who make the edits, they never respond. My assumption is this is some Mormon user out in Utah. Well, and we're scattered everywhere. Perhaps inexperienced researchers, I suspect so there. Is there anything you can do to get the word out to the members of the church that to not just willy-nilly merge people? <laughs> Some of us are taking time and effort to put accurate information to family search, and when this regularly happens, it is incredibly frustrating. I understand the LS Church wants to perform ordinances on these deceased, but it feels like increasingly inexperienced users are merging different people who are not the same but two different individuals. When this happens, the unmerging and cleaning up the mess is incredibly time-consuming. What's even more frustrating is when my 11th or 12th cousin doesn't even respond to the polite message I'm sending them, I wish there was a certification required by Family Search users before any person can willy-nilly log in and start making edits that some of us will then have to clean up because the basic principles of genealogical research are not being applied to user choices on Family Search. Yeah, I recognize this issue. This is certainly an issue of uh, all of us trying to work together to collect our family and all of the information about their family, about your families. Um, I'm glad that you're able to know that they are at least your cousin. Um, obviously, you're working far back into your line, probably. Um, so records are a little bit more sparse. And uh, just, you know, you can respond to me here on online here while we're sitting here talking. That's one of the reasons why we're looking at a new merge and seeing if there's things we can do in there to uh, help people understand whether or not these two people should be merged. Um, one of the things we're looking at is uh, the merge will, you'll have to go to beta and try it out. So the merge is going to move into different stages. You go stage one, stage two, stage three. Stage one is, uh, are these really the same family? So we make them look at all of the relationships, all the kids, all the parents, and some of the information and say, are these two families the same? And if they say yes, or if they say no, then we they stop the merge. If they say yes, then it goes to stage two. And in phase two, we ask you to, uh, we pre-select some stuff to, to keep on the survivor. And then we also, uh, put warnings on there. So we say stuff like, warning, uh, if you do this, um, or the birth dates are way far off, more than five years apart, or the distance between, you know, eventually we'll say stuff like distance between these two places is really far apart. You know, especially further back you go in time, we find that most people never traveled more than one to three miles uh, away. And so it's unusual to say these two people are the same persons when they're 25 or 50 miles away. So we're going to try to start doing those kinds of things to help people look at what's different and then start asking, are you sure? And then if they go through all those, then the third step is we'll show you what it's going to look like if you go ahead and finish it. Then if you hit finish, then we're going to do is going to say, we're going to go check the system and say, if you if we go ahead and do this, we'll come back and tell you if if it's going to create a data problem if you do this. So we're trying to get a little bit more clever, a little bit more uh, helpful in training and helping people with that merge. Um, you know, I also think that uh, we can we need we're going to continue to work on making sure our possible duplicates is giving good answers. 
I know that sometimes there's these astonishment cases where where two people are told that they're the same <coughs> and they're really very different. There's just those things happen. And of course, further you get back, it feels like everybody had the same name, you know. So that makes it hard, uh, but we're going to continue to work on those things and try to get better and better. Um, Yes, okay, so Rena in here said, well, we find that when processing hints from recommended tasks on the landing page that many have already been done and processed. So what's the deal there, right? Why is the glitch? Well, let me tell you how that works. So they take your, uh, I think they go eight generations now. They take your, when you log in, we look at your eight generations, and we figure out if there's any tasks, eight up and five down, I think it is. And see if there's any tasks that you need to do, like a data fix up because there's a data problem or there's a hint or there's a um, missing, some data missing. But you're not the only people in those eight generations back and five generations down. There's your cousins that are, or your sister and brother or close relatives that are also in that same line. So we, th so we offer those same things to every one of them. We only refresh, refresh that, I think, uh, every 24 hours so that we're not hammering the system all the time. So when you, even if you do it, it doesn't necessarily go away per se, but sometimes you'll do it, you'll go to click to do it and it'll already be done. And that's just because somebody else, some relative of yours already did that task. So um, I guess we could get more sophisticated, but, but I'd like to get some other things done too. Okay, let's see. Here's the next question, and then I'll go come back and – all right. So I still understand your issue and, uh, with the people changing things, especially with Merge, and we're trying some new things here, and we'll hopefully get better. Sue says, I keep seeing historical records where the indexers omitted the given name or surname. The editing tool only helps with field fields, not missing ones. Is there any plan to upgrade the tool to allow adding missing information? So right now on the uh, what we call user corrections tool, you can only correct the, the name that was indexed. And um, that's the limitation. We're, we're developing more. We're going to get more and more on there so that you can do more things. And yes, eventually, I have no time frame when that would happen, we're going to enhance the system so that you can add new information from the record so you can take things off the record and add it to that index and improve the index so that we have uh, all the information about that person from that record. So eventually that's going to happen. Uh, just be patient with us. It, there's only selected collections that we even allow you to do corrections. And that's just because we're just beginning. We're just starting and we got... <clears throat> a lot of different records and a lot of different collections. Each of them are unique and require different sort of controls on them and manners to, to edit. So hang in there. We'll get there eventually. Uh, Robert asks, is the Explore Images features now rolled out? Do they call it Explore Image or do they call it an Image Search? We, kind of, we call it Image Search internally. And no, that is not rolled out to everybody. And the reason for that is we're still testing and we're also making sure that we have good what's called metadata. Metadata is not index data, but information about what kind of collection it is and where is it from and things like that. It's qualities of the collection, not the actual indexes or the actual images. And we have to work through and make sure that our Metadata is good and correct and, and informative, and then we have to do some more processing on those collections in order to allow you to um, explore them properly, to be able to find where the image is inside of an image role. Okay, For those who haven't seen, that feature <coughs> allows you to enter in such as names and types of records and uh, and time frames and counties, and then we'll jump right to that uh, role and that film uh, for that role uh, or image number on that role. Then that's where that collection, that set of records start, 
it helps you eliminate having to search through a bunch of other things. Um, let's see. I'll give another one, and then I'll come back to Lisa. Karen says, will you share with us the most recent numbers on family search? Number of users, 30 million. Number of people in the tree, um, 1.25 billion. Number of sources is, uh, let me go look at that. We did a thing here. Let me go look here. I'm going to kind of jump out here. Open my email because we did we just did some. If you go to Family Search, um, uh, huh? Let me look here. I don't know why I have a hard time finding this. Oh, I know why, because it was last year. <laughs> All right, uh, so. Let's see if I can find it here. Can't seem to find it. Oh, there it is. Okay. I think I got it here. So you can go to. All right. So I'm going to put this out there. I'm going to go over and add this to. This is a year in, year in review. And uh, what that gives you, that's something we publish regularly. And we had. Uh, 6.3 billion total searchable records and images online. We have uh, 1.24 billion people in the tree, 32 million contributors, 3.5 million new contributors in 2019. There's 1.4 billion sources, um, and we are, we're providing 2.4 billion hints. Uh, memories, there were 8.75 million new photos and stories added this last year, total of 40 million. Um, help, there's uh, this is how many people we've helped. There's like 15 million, 15.4 15 million volunteer service hours for indexers and missionaries helping uh, people. So go off and check out that uh, that URL to see that, and then you can see a bunch of the stats from uh, the closing of 2019. All right, Lisa has here, um, can the 110-year rule be extended? My father's uncle has just become available without permission, over 110. However, my father's cousin, the uncle's next of kin, child, is still alive. We did not submit the work to be done because the, his next of kin was still alive. However, this ordinance has been performed by the eighth cousin, so probably from ordinance ready. Yeah. So I don't know what you mean by extended. We just do uh, the rule on 110 is you have to be, um, you have to get permission from the closest living relative or the one of the closest living relatives to get to do that. This person's over 110 years, then there's no permission required. So, Lisa, you'll have to email me at ron at familysearch.org if you want to tell me a little bit about what you mean by can the 110-year rule be extended. All right. <clears throat> Let me see if I got any more on here. In your last live, someone mentioned that had no children could be added to the person's page. Where is that option? It's not in the... It's not in the person. It's in the person page under other information. If you go to a person page and you go to, I'll just go to one here. I'll go to a person page, and you go to other information. You have new information you can add. One of which is now called uh, no chill, no couple relationships, which means. 
They were never married or anything. No children. Those two things are available now on the other information section. When you enter those in, then it should give you a data problem if you if someone happens to add a couple relationship or add children, uh, it will give you a data problem if you do that. So that it warns them that the thing has been marked that they said they never had any children. Um, when processing hints in other places in the system, it works differently. They disappear at the time. Why the difference? Yeah, I'd have to. You need to tell me more about it, Reno. When which ones disappeared and which one didn't? Probably need a PID or something with, along with the source. The hints, oh, oh, the difference between the home page and on the person page <clears throat> is on the home page, they calculate it once and then they hold on to it for 24 hours. On the person page, it's calculated every, you know, we, you get new hints every 60 seconds. So when you edit the person page in some way, we recalculate the hints for that person. So that's more dynamic. The home page is more static. They do it once, and they figure during that 24-hour period that you're on that you'll take care of them or you'll be done with them and, or have nothing to do, and then n nothing to do because all of them are done. Then the next day you log in, there should be new sets if they're, if they're available. And we don't want to have to calculate every 60 seconds too, so that's why. It's a little thing to keep performance working well so that the rest of the system is smoother. Are they plans to extend the generations of the descendancy chart to show more generations? Um, <clears throat> I'll have to reserve judgment. I'll reserve that one. We're, we're talking about doing a Chinese descendancy view. That Chinese view, China, Chinese, those who have Chinese ancestry have many, many generations, and it's difficult for them to enter it in a landscape or a fan chart or stuff like that. And their traditional view is a little different. So we're looking at how we can create a view that would help those who have Chinese ancestry and many generations. Some of them have uh, books of genealogies that go back to, you know, B.C., way, way early in the B.C. And uh, those, that system, that, the, that display will also be available for any other, um, any other uh, tree structure. Although you know the uh, Chinese one has a bit limitations, you know it shows the it shows the male line is the line and the women's line, female line, the spouses is just shows the spouse. And if you click at that, then you flip to a different line, and now you see the the woman's line, the wife's line. And so you just have to understand that that will look a little different. Uh, the reason why we did that that far is because we didn't want to put much more burden on the tree in loading up all of those ancestors. So most people just move back, right? They just go back further, and then they see another segment of it. That way uh, it doesn't put too much of a burden on the system. <clears throat> you have to remember that there's, you know, millions that are doing it all the same minute or second. Okay. Um, Carol says, can you make it possible to only share certain temple ordinances with someone? I would like to share baptism confirmations with nieces and nephews without sharing all the ordinances that they can do. Uh, yes, that's a, that's an, that's a uh, frequent request. We are looking at being able to do that. It's going to be a little while before we do. Uh, however, I will give you a way that you can do it. So, um, so you're... you're Sharing with them is the best because that way they get their name on the card and they feel they feel important and excited because it's got their name and they feel a responsibility to go get that done. But uh, but another way you can do it if you don't want to share the whole ordinance, the whole reservation, is to print on a, a do a print of your baptism and confirmation, and when you print, it will. Put a new tab out on your browser, and it has the PDF file, and usually you push print to print it. Well, don't print it. Instead, download it. Usually most uh, browsers will have a little down arrow or some word that says download. Click that and download the PDF. You have to do this for one card, and then you email that PDF to the 
niece or nephew that you would like to have that card and then just tell them print out the PDF. They print it out, they got the card, now they can go do those ordinances. So that's a way you can do it now, kind of working around the fact that we don't have the ability to share individual ordinances. <clears throat> okay, next one over here. Will Roots Text be recording your Wednesday morning class about what's new in Family Search? Uh, no, they're not. I'm not being recorded at all this year. Um, that class, I will only be speaking for probably 20 minutes in that class. It's the three people are going to do it. It's considered what they, the new thing they've been doing the last year or two is called Power Hour, where they have three people stand up and talk about their areas. So we have Roger Bell that's going to talk about memories. Uh, we have, um, now I lost my head. Oh, Brian Osted, who's going to get up and talk about discoveries. And then I'm going to get up and talk about uh, some new things in Family Tree. But it's not going to be recorded. Sorry, but, you know, I can talk about my parts after Roots Tech. We can do something on Facebook to show some of that. Um, yeah, so Rodney, you said that uh, support for 110 year policy denied your request, and you said that you're not related to the to uh, your ex-mother-in-law, and that's correct, and, and the policy is that you need to be related to that person. Uh, uh, that's what we're working on right now. We, I don't know if we have an exception process, so I'll have to get back to you on that. We, uh, we uh, Okay, so that's what that is. Oh, you want the 110 to be extended to 130. Well, we'll have to go back to, uh, to get approval for that. The 110 was... It used to be actually 95, and then it went to 110 because people were living so much longer that we went to 110. Um, so would it be possible to allow other people to adjust memories, photo, or document? Um, we are talking about what kind of concepts from Family Tree we can think about for memories. One of those probably – we'll have to think about that one. Right now we're just thinking about – uh, maybe allowing people to help fill in the title and the date and the place, uh, and maybe some tags. Uh, that's what we're noodling with. We haven't decided anything, so don't panic or anything yet. Uh, but we haven't talked about adjusting, you know, because the that image is really owned by the person who uploaded it. Um, so I will take that. Let me go write that in there as... Would we allow adjustments to the memory? And you had a photo or document. See, the problem with the document is you're changing the words in the document, so that'd be tough. Maybe a photo that, you know, needs to rotate a little bit or stuff like that. So, I, I you know, so I think it gets a little iffier when you, the further you get into adjusting the actual memory. All right, I'll go back to the list here. Judas says, uh, when using Source Linker, by the way, the last one was Leanne about Roots Tech recording. Judith, uh, when using Source Linker, it brings over a box to standardize dates and place and placed place, but is not always activated so we can use it. Is it necessary to go to the person page to standardize? Why the inconsistency? All righty. This question has been coming up a lot lately as. Uh, Source Linker has been allowed to uh, bring over new data, not uh, e existing data. And people are confused about what standardized means. That's, this is the problem, what's happening. You're not understanding. And it's, it's a term we, we talk about, but it's not potentially obvious to people. So I'm just going to write down some places here. I don't like that purple. It's not dark enough. Let me get the black over here. I'm going to write down a little bit about, I'm going to write down a place because that's where it's most common. All right. Uh, so I will do this. I said there's usually two fields. You know that for places. One is what the user puts in, 
The other is what the system interprets. And I'm doing a little bit of abbreviating here. So the first question is, is that standardized? Do you think that's standardized? Right, what do you think? So say something out there on somebody. Let me go scroll down here so I can see it. Would you call that standardized? Those are asking out there. So mo some people would say this is not standardized because what they're looking for is this. El Paso, El Paso County, Texas, United States. Okay. So when things are brought over, so even in the person pages, on the person pages, there are two fields right now. The first field, this one, by the way, let me use this hand. This field is where people enter in the information they want to enter in, whatever it is. And then this field is what the system figured out that that was. Now, when you type this in family tree on the field, it drops up a list of potential these that match. And if you select it, then it puts this value in both fields. Okay. So some people think, no, well, that's standardizing when you put in the commas and you put in the county and all that kind of stuff. When in reality, when we're talking about standardized, we mean a place that the computer understands. So when you get things from SourceLinker and they come over right now, they don't let you change the original information because that information came from a record, but they will let you click here on this and pick the proper standard should the wrong one be automatically selected. So the only so because of that, we don't let you edit this and change it, but we do allow you to pick a different standard if you need to. So that's what SourceLinker is doing right now. The reason you have to do that is we have rules that say if you're going to edit, you know, uh, they didn't they didn't want to put all that code in to figure out all that stuff, and it's also coming from a record, and so that's original text from the record. So those are the reasons and principles why, and you need to understand the difference between it's in a standard format. I mean, it has commas and it has all the counties and everything versus standardized for the system, which means the computer now knows that ID that represents that person on that place on the planet. So that's the reason why you're not getting to be able, you only get to work with the one line and not the other line because it's original text. So, um, so see, everybody says it's not standard. Yeah, well, I get it. It's not in a standard format, but it is a place, and that, that's the confusion that's happening. We're looking at ways to change the way we do standards so that because a lot of people are confused um, and don't really understand why we have two fields. There's been enough people that, that have not used New Family Search that they don't recall that we hardly had any place inside of our standards database, so lots of places that people entered in didn't exist in our system, so we had no clue where they were. So we need to allow people to enter in all their data in the one, and then we made our best guess. There are still places where we only have the country or maybe state level. <coughs> so if they put in the you know county and the city and stuff, we don't know anything about it. We wouldn't want to delete that from that first line because it's valuable information. Okay, um, so Leela Jones, when adding people with documents, it defaults to deceased. It seems to, to make it hard to change them to living. Okay, let me talk about when you're doing source linker and you're using sources and you're uh, the source linker and you're creating a new person, it actually doesn't default. It defaults to deceased if the record, and this is a good, this is actually a good case I haven't heard about. Uh, Leila, or is it Leah? Yeah, Leah, Leah Jones. If you could send me an email with this particular case with the source and the person, then uh, this is interesting because what we do is we take the data that's in the record, and if it's over 110, we go ahead and pre mark deceased. 
what you're telling me is you can't push the living on that particular one. And uh, even though you must know they're living, I, I don't know. Um, so if it's if uh, if it can detect that it's over 110, it goes ahead and marks living. So it would be hard to make them living. You just you would add it, and then you'd have to go back to it and then mark it as living. So there's a way for you to do that. Just go to it after you've created it and mark it as living. Most people struggle because we won't let you mark it dead. So there's records where they have information about a person, but there's no identifying date to know when they were born. Uh, and so we have to assume that they're still alive. And so people say, I can't make it deceased. And that's true. We don't let you make it deceased because there's no evidence. And we require you to enter data into the reason field as to why you, you believe they're dead. Because, uh, and so we won't allow you to create the person and tell you if you want to mark it living, uh, deceased, you have to provide evidence of that in the reason statement as to why it's, it's okay to mark them dead, even though there's no death information. And remember, you're creating this person, so that person hasn't existed. Yeah, I said, I know proper would have been in the United States, but I didn't have enough whiteboard. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, okay, I'm going to go back to the questions. Uh, is there any way to add new labels list on the individual detail page? An example, the, the, there's a label for War of 1812, one for Civil War, but there isn't a label for American Revolution. Yeah, let me talk a little bit about labels. Um, we're having a real struggle with labels, and that's because we would have to create thousands of them. As uh, it, we felt like this was a good idea and it allowed people to label things, and the real purpose of the label was sort of like topic tags that exist now in memories where you can click on a label and then see everybody that had that label, has that label on them. And what we're finding is we cannot, there's no way for us to keep up with the number of labels we need to create or that people want. And then you multiply that by the number of countries that are using this particular, uh, that could use labels that, uh, that there's no way we could keep up with the number of labels we need to do. So we're, we're reevaluating whether we should have labels at all. If you have a particular reason why you believe strongly that we need to keep the labels, uh, then send me an email. Um, but it's just been problematic. I mean, it had, it's just not working well. It, it's fast enough and all that stuff, but and you can add them and take them away, but it just uh, we cannot create labels fast enough for people and for all the countries so we don't think we're going to be able to deal with that so i just want to let you know we're struggling with that and we're trying to figure out what to do and one of the options of course is to to stop doing that so let me know your thoughts on that uh, images under the search title Searchable by play. Oh, that you, it's it's an image search. That's what we were talking about. I think that's what you're talking about, Terry. Uh, others can maybe jump in while we're carrying on here about it. Uh, here's one helping their friend. They only use iPad uh, when they added photos on the iPad and use one by adding a profile pic of one of the people added. We went back about five minutes later and the photos were gone from Family Search completely. That didn't happen on the PC. We tried three times and the same problem. Photos themselves were okay. So what? So the, the problem was that the profile picture didn't work. Is that what the issue is there, Deborah? Let me know on a reply to, to yourself there, I guess. Uh, and yes, Jennifer, there always sets them as living unless there's death evidence in the record. Oh, you're saying they're deceased in the app. Oh, I got to make that note. So you're saying, what you're saying is that on the browser, uh, record, uh, record creation of a person is always set as living if there is no death information, but on the app, they are always 
set as deceased. Oh, thank you very much for that information. We got to take care of that, fix that. Because there's plenty of people out there that says, if you're in the 1940 census, you got to be dead. And we know that that's not necessarily true. Thank you very much for letting me, for helping me understand. How can someone post pictures on my family tree when I have it as private? Well, they can't post pictures on the living because living is private. But they can post pictures, as you know, on the deceased because they're not private. Uh, we've I've talked about this before in the past. We've have we haven't been able to get to it because of other priorities, but we want uh, we want to provide a way for people to share their living into a common place and then be able to have everybody go to that place. And if everybody goes to that place and does their stuff at that place, then everybody will see all the changes that happen on that place, such as adding new memories or things like that. I call them shared family groups or sh uh, shared family groups. Uh, I doubt that'll be the real name, but anyway, that's that's one of the things we've been thinking about. It's a it's not easy to do, but we know we can do it. We just haven't got uh, um, we haven't started on it yet, unfortunately. Um, Yeah, Deborah, you said all the pics disappeared. Would you send me an email about this so I can get a little more detail? We can go back and forth and see if we can figure out if we have a bug there. I'm assuming you're doing this in the browser. This is the one where you put uploaded the pictures and they disappeared after you made a portrait. What I'm asking is, did you do that in the browser or were you doing this on the on the mobile app on the iPad? Um Okay, here's the next question. When we take a name off ordinances ready, should we check for duplicates on the person's detail page and on find before doing the ordinance? Um, <clears throat> I'll, I'll explain what we do when we do ordinance ready. When you push the ordinance ready button, that's just as a, this is just a learning thing here. The first place we look at is, um, the first place we look is on your reservation list. If it's on your reservation list, we offer to print it for you again because we assume you want to print it and go. If it's not on your reservation list, we look at anything that you shared with the temple. And if it's if you got something there, we'll take it off the temple list and ask if you would like us to print it. Third place we look is we look for any related names that are on the temple list, uh, shared temple list. And if there is one, then we will pull that out of the shared reservation list, shared temple list, and offer to print that for you. The fourth place we look is crawling up your tree, looking for a person in the tree. So we're, we're going up um, 10 generations up, I think we're going right now, and five down. And we look to see if there's somebody in there who needs the ordinance that you're asking for. So if you're asking for BC, then you're getting you know a whole reservation. If you're asking for I or E, then we're looking for somebody who already has B and C done, B, C, I done, okay? If we find one, then what we do when we're looking at people in the tree is one, we check to make sure it qualifies. We check to make sure it has no possible duplicates, possible duplicates that the system knows about, you know, where we would say, you have a possible duplicate, you need to merge. Three, it looks at any data problems. If there's any data problems, it skips it. And then um, I don't think that's that's it. If it qualifies, if it ha if it has no duplicates and it has no data problems, then we'll offer it to you. Now, so if you were to go to that person, if you were walking around the tree and you saw the person sitting in the tree, you just you'd click reserve and you'd be off and running, unless you push unless you manually go look for duplicates, because if you're just looking for a possible duplicate that's sitting there, it's not any different than what Ordinance Ready does. Now, certainly Family Search and the Family Tree will not find every possible duplicate. You don't want us to really do that because you thought people were merging bad things together. If we just gave everybody named John Smith to you to see if it's a possible duplicate, you could see how it would trash up stuff. 
So we only provide duplicates that we think are pretty close, four or five stars. And those are the ones we offer. And still it's frustrating because you tell me people merged two families together or two people together that weren't the same. So we're not good enough yet to hand out really great ones. And that's what we're using for Ordinance Ready. So, but that doesn't mean that there isn't a duplicate out there somewhere. Certainly there could be a person that just, uh, so I've had people say, well, I like find, find similar people. Be, and that's on the person page of, a, of an ancestor. You can on the bottom in the tool section. Because uh, it, way back when, when they were uh, ordinances done in the temple and the temple cards were created by Temple Ready, way back when, uh, they we, we didn't require people to give us all their data. You know, after a while, we got to where we were asking people to do um, – family group sheets, but then we stopped doing that because it was just too much effort and people just did it in ordinance ready. So we didn't collect all that data. We only kept what was put on the card. And sometimes the only thing that's on the card is the name and the, and deceased, you know, not even a birth date, or maybe it would have one year, a year for birth and deceased. And so that is really small amount of data. So, we would never be good enough. That wouldn't be good enough to say it's a possible duplicate of somebody else because it would match, you know, hundreds of thousands of different people. So you're, you are welcome. If you feel what I, what I say is push ordinance ready, uh, take the names, uh, go look. If you feel, read the names, if you feel impressed to go look at that person before you take it to the temple, then do so. And that, that could be uh, inspiration telling you that you need to check for duplicates or maybe there's more people. We have, we have gotten feedback that Ordinance Ready can find you places in the tree where it's missing a lot of people. It has, has sources all sitting there, hints ready for you, but uh, those people haven't been added. So I hear stories all the time of people that said, I went and checked those ones that Ordinance Ready gave me and I found, you know, 10 families, 10 more families that needed to be put in the tree. So use your, your thoughts and feelings, and, uh, but in a, in a normal wandering around and finding it, it wouldn't show possible duplicates. So as far as uh, the system goes, we believe it's acceptable to take those to the temple without going and looking for more. Uh, here another one, and uh, that was Michelle. This one's Andrea. Is, is there an official source that you can direct me to, to about sealing all related marriages, even if they ended in divorce or in mortality? That's what I've heard we do, but I'm looking for official counsel for a patron I'm helping. I don't think there's anything in there that says you have to go seal them to everybody. Uh, somebody out there probably has that at the tips of their fingers under the help section and we talk about sealing to spouse <clears throat> um, it says deceased couples who are divorced may be sealed so here's I'll put that out there on the feed here um, there you go, take a look at that. Uh, go click on that article, it talks about uh, uh, sealing spouses, and then there it says that it's perfectly fine to uh, these couples who were divorced may be sealed, which provides a way for one of their children to be sealed to parents. What's important to realize is you need to have, they need to have the sealing ordinance performed for them so that they have the opportunity to be sealed, to, to be, have that relationship, not necessarily with those particular person, but to have the blessings of being uh, together with forever with someone, okay? Same with children, they need to be sealed to their parents. It's not because they're going to be sealed to those set of parents if they were abusive parents or something. Well, they're not going to be together. I mean, because you're going to be in a happy place in, in next life and everything's going to be happy and you're going to be fulfilled and, and perpetually happy forever. And that's not going to be with somebody who's abusive. So 
uh, but, but the ordinance needs to be performed so that they have the right to have that relationship in the next life. Should they, should we all repent and do what's right, right? So remember the, uh, sometimes we mix re personal relationships with ceilings and we need to understand that it's really about providing you the blessing of a ceiling and it never doesn't happen until the, until you're ready to receive your kingdom. And at that time, they're going to ask. There was a, I was having a, I'll, I'll probably end with this. So I was having uh, one of my first times that I was, I just got hired, family search, and they had a Christmas devotional. I got hired in June. Later, at the end of the year, they had a devotional. It was the first one I've gone to. And it's uh, talked to the department. And it was, uh, I remember going, and I was working in Salt Lake, so I was traveling from Provo up to Salt Lake every day. And I went to the uh, devotional, and I remember it was Elder Scott. And he, Elder Scott uh, talked for a while. <coughs> and then he said, <clears throat> I'm going to, we're going to do a little Q&A. But before we do, I want to talk to the brethren. You know, that's always a warning, because brethren, we're going to get chewed out, because we messed up, Right happens we need it now and then and he says i want to tell you that you need to treat your spouse uh, as the queen that she is because when you're standing before uh, god or jesus or who who's the one that's going to help us and he's going to provide you your kingdom he is going to ask her do you want him forever and if she says yes, then that's when God will say, you are now together forever as, a, as husband and wife and go a king and, and, and queen and go uh, do your kingdom. And uh, obviously, if we don't treat each other right, then, you know, he says you want to treat her so that she'll say yes. So I made a big mistake, just so you know. I went home. After that, I was so impressed with it. I went and told my wife the story, and I happened to add a little comment that said, uh, boy, I sure hope, you know, he asks us, us guys. And she's like, well, why would he do that? I mean, <laughs> he's lucky to have us, you know, kind of thing. And I agree. But anyway, it, it's just been a source of joke sort of in the house about, uh, about who's going to ask for that. And uh, I'm sure that we'll all be happy because that's the intent of uh of the next life if we uh, if we repent all right everybody thank you very much for all you do i appreciate your work i appreciate your uh your willingness to come and listen i'm um, i'm thank you for the for asking the questions we wouldn't have anything to talk about if if you didn't have any questions i hope that the, some of the answers and some of the discussions we've had tonight have been useful for you Thank you very much and carry on. I'm unclear at this point in time whether I'm going to try to squeeze in another session. I should have done this last week so that I could do it next week, but Roots Tech's only two weeks away and they're still fussing over my slide deck. So I'm still working on that. So stay tuned. We may or may not do something before Roots Tech, but definitely after Roots Tech if we don't get something else this month. So you all have a good evening and thank you very much for attending and we'll see you next time. Keep Keep putting those questions in. Anytime they come to your mind, just go out on Facebook, that page, and add it to the template, and then we'll have it all ready for us when we start uh, talking next time. So thank you very much, and have a good evening. Bye-bye.